Okay, so uh, it's my pleasure now to introduce Rhoda Taylor, who will be speaking Perfect. on the Cowichan civic leaders' perceptions of their impact of community health and their relationship with island health. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, excellent. Um, I wander, so I may need someone to wave me back if I totally disappear from the screen. So this is, I'm Rhoda. Uh, this is the project that I worked on in the Cowichan Valley. I first wanted to give an acknowledgement that we are today on the Coast Salish Territory, and you may have seen the Greek Camus, and I would like to give thank you to the Lekwungen grandmothers who cultivated in, in these fields for generations. So we know that civic leadership has an impact on public health. We have gone through the courses, we've done our reading, we're totally aware of it. What we don't know from, <laughs> we're healthcare professionals, we don't know what civic leaders know about their impact. We have studied them, have they got a clue about what they... So I looked at the leaders in the Cowichan Valley. Um, it's a relatively complex political system over a big area. There is the regional district with nine regional directors, the four municipalities. Each of the municipalities has a mayor and councillor. I don't know that you can see this. I know that everything washed out. Basically, that's the geographic area. What I want you to realize is though, as though it crosses, looks like it's large, the population is actually on the east coast. So a large section of that is empty. The primary provider of health care is Island Health. It used to be called VHA, still is VHA. Um, and it monitors over the entire island and part of the main coast. Right? Three of the health areas actually coincide, uh, Lake Cowichan, Lady Smith, and Cowichan. All right, so my question was how do the civic leaders understand or perceive the impact of their work on health and how do they perceive the relationship they have with the health authority? I asked the question for a very particular reason, and that is because health and healthcare provision has been very, very controversial in this community, um, to the point where there has, was a BC Ombudsman report. It is in the news, the civic leaders are talking about it all the time, there are, are posters on the street, it's a huge community engagement piece. One is the result of a closure of a hospital, one is the loss of all physicians in a small community, and one is they're in the midst of making the decision about where the new hospital is going to go. So, how'd they do that? There was some lead-in to this, there was a lot of background to get to this point, which I'm not going to get into, but I did two focus groups, I had nine elected officials who came, I did recording by a secretary because in the early work, the elected officials were absolutely adamant I could not record them, right? Nothing could be on the record. Everything had to be, you know, contested if it showed up in the press. So um, I had a secretary and coding was done manually. And I want to be really honest, if there was a huge piece of learning about this, coding. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Ah. Um, Ethics board approval, I put the application in the 1st of December, I uh, went back and forth, thank you to all those who helped me while I panicked, and uh, we got it in late January. Again, thank you to the Island Health Research Ethics people, literally one of them walked it around by hand to make sure I got it by the end of January. Invitations to participate were sent out by email, focus groups were in late February. Results. That first question, and now the first question was interesting, but it was done in a way to get them thinking about health. It was a kind of setting up the stage for the next pieces. What I had not anticipated was how knowledgeable they were. They were quoting definitions. They were coming back, they were giving me examples. They were coming out with the classic social determinants of health definitions and saying, and this is tied into why we do this. And this is tied into why we do that. They were. I did not have the chance to do the research to find out how come they were so knowledgeable. I think somebody's been doing a lot of work with elected officials in BC because they were way more educated than I had any idea. Uh, they might have been more educated than I was. <laughs> Five main themes about the relationship between island health. 
It was fascinating. It was interesting to have to write it because in academic writing, you can't put swear words. <laughs> right? Now, one of the pieces about this that I want to really emphasize to you is I can't impress strongly enough on you. I run uh, focus groups and I run uh, support groups constantly. I have never seen people with group skills like this. Oh my heavens, were these people good in a group. Um, they were respectful. They took notes so that they, everything they said was concise. They were just an amazing group of people to work with. I really gained a huge appreciation for them. So downloading responsibility. They were really, really conscious of the fact that healthcare spending was being downloaded federally, provincially, provincially, regionally, and then on to them. And that this was increased. Their perception was that their workload around health, they weren't going to be able to pass the buck they were where it hit the road. They asked for a lot of education. Could we know more? If this is moving into our sphere of, of, of responsibility, we need to be educated. We need to know more. We need to know more about community health. We need to know more about what Island Health does. What are the legal responsibilities of Island Health? They wanted increased collaboration. They gave specific details what they would like, how they would like to see it. They really, really wanted to be working collaboratively. They wanted improved communication. They kept feeling they were blindsided, <coughs> that things were coming at them out of left field. Announcements were being made without their involvement, that plans were suddenly being released and they didn't know they were coming, um, that they were doing strategic planning but they couldn't get any feedback from Island Health. That, that they were talked to, but they could never respond back. That they could, they were, there were incidences of initiatives where funding was lost because they couldn't get an email back or a, somebody to answer a phone call or huge possibilities. And again, I had representatives from across the geographic area, not one specific group. And I heard these stories over and over again. One of the interesting things in the focus groups was that some of, to my surprise, some of the participants did not know one another. Right? Although they were all elected officials, it's a big area. And some of the councillors from one community had not met the other. So there was a lot of networking going on. Um, but also, I was hearing similar stories without people who had shared stories beforehand. I cannot emphasize the degree of table pounding vocal language. Um, one of the challenges in writing this up was actually finding the academic capacity to express this. Okay. Um, and some of you will know I went through a few versions. Okay. Um, they don't trust and they don't believe. Now, you can think of all the ways that the person could express that they don't believe. I don't anything they like. I don't, right, okay? They gave examples of why they don't have that trust, um, and they had current situations. So they had the historical, and they had the current. They had things from yesterday, and they had things from four years before, and they all had a story. And it was, it was incredibly detailed. Now, I looked at the research to try to gain some understanding, and the research all go back to a key study. So you'll notice this is older, 1969. When I went through the references in the current research, I kept coming up with this study, so I thought, quote, this study. Now, if you look at it, they went in here, now, now the, they would like to get to partnership, They're at, they identified manipulation, they didn't identify therapy, although I'm not sure I wasn't doing it. Um, they went between placation and manipulation. A consultation they identified as they come and tell us what they want us to tell us back. Right? They're not actually consulting. So it's actually an interesting old piece of recent uh, study. Implications are specific only to Cowichan. Boy, did they want to collaborate and cooperate despite the degree of trust. They really want to work for their community. They haven't given up. Despite their strength of feeling, they are not walking away from the table. They are becoming more engaged, although we may not always see that in our work. Um, and I think I have to emphasize that the implications for public health of disengaged civic leaders is enormous. We cannot do public health work without the civic leadership. And I want to give thank you. Uh, there's one person missing here, and that's Don Poland from Island Health, who is actually the person who walked around to make sure I got ethics approval on time. So thank you to all.
Okay, uh, questions for Rhoda? And Kath, can I give that to you? I'm going to grab the other ones. Need to run around? Anybody have questions? Oh, yeah, well, there's a few. All right. Well, it's hard to believe I did that in 10 minutes. Hi, Rhoda. Hi, it's Ardeth here. Um, ah. That was absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. That was so great. Um, I was just wondering if you got any sense of the perspective from Island Health. Um, I'm not permitted to answer that. Okay. All right. That was just my question. I was just, I think it'd be very curious to hear. Uh, the one piece I can say is I did get, I, because this was part of, this is the research part of a much bigger part. And there was another report that was written earlier for Island Health. And there was more pushback about the earlier one that wasn't perhaps that did include some of the actual honest language. So by the time this was released, Island Health knew what they were getting. Um, I did, interestingly, a couple of weeks ago, get from my practicum su supervisor the report that someone from Island Health, senior, uh, had criticized one of the quotes that I used from a government document. In other words, they had found an error in the government document. Um, and he used it as an example to show that it was being read. They didn't criticize my work, but they weren't impressed with the government provincial document that I quoted from. So. Okay. Well, thanks very much. I, you know, it's interesting because Rhoda's first draft read like a drugstore novel. <laughs> <laughs> it, it took a bit of work. Yeah, thank you all. 